Are you actually lactose intolerant? Acute or obtuse? I think I might even go back to the WWE and do a couple matches. Oh, wow. What's going on out there in YouTube land? Today we're with the legendary Hall of Famer, the Pennsylvania State High School Champion, the two-time Division I National Champion, one of only four men to have the Grand Slam of Amateur Wrestling, 1995 World Champion, 1996 Olympic Gold Medal winner, 21-time belt holder, 13-time individual World Champion in pro wrestling, 2017 inductee to the WWE Hall of Fame, 2001 inductee into the USA Wrestling Hall of Fame, the International Sports Hall of Famer, I mean, the man, I, I could just go on for hours with the credentials <laughs> this man has, the best worker of the 2010s in wrestling, I mean, holy smokes, man. I don't know how you know all that. You have like an encyclopedia <laughs> here. <laughs> Kurt Angle, folks. Uh, hey, it's great to be here, man. Yeah. I'm excited about this. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to tell us some stories from the road, talk a little bit about you know his amateur wrestling, what got him into it, um, some of his favorite things from pro wrestling, and then just some of the projects he's working on currently. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the injuries he's had, and uh, yeah, if you guys are going to get to know a little bit more about Kurt, you know, on some, some different questions. We tend to ask some questions like, Name your Mount Rushmore of uh, music, or my, name your Mount Rushmore of, of movies. And so, okay. we'll keep see. Me, uh, keep me on my toes. Yeah, yeah we'll see what kind of taste you have in movies, music, stuff like that too, okay. pop culture. Ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. Let's go. All right, Kurt, so let's, let's take you all the way back to the beginning. So you started amateur wrestling at a very early age. Mm -hmm. What sparked that? Did you have fa uh, friends or brothers or family members that were wrestlers? My brother, Mark, um, he got in a lot of trouble when he was younger and um, got in a lot of fights. And um, my wrestling coach approached him one day and said, hey, why don't you take your aggression out and wrestle him at? Mm. So he started wrestling his junior year in high school. He did extremely well his first year. He went to, he qualified for state. And then the next year he took fifth at the Greco-Roman Nationals and only his second year wrestling. And um, we kind of followed suit. So everybody else started wrestling because of my brother, Mark and uh, we all were pretty good. I happened to be the best one, <laughs> and it's because I was the youngest. So I, I, I got more experience from my brothers and you know, uh, their, their, you know, their opinions on everything, and I was able to soak it in, so I just learned from them. So you're obviously pretty talented from an early age, and it seems like that's the way with most sports. You played football and some other sports growing up too? Yeah, I played football, baseball. I, I always was playing a sport, regardless what time of the year it was. I, I was always busy. And, and in my family, the Angle household, uh, that's what we revolved our, our life around, were sports. sports. Our parents felt that sports would help would build good character, incredible work ethic. Mm -hmm. So we all participated in sports all year round. And so what were your favorite sports to watch growing up? Obviously, you're probably a Steelers fan, right? Yeah, yeah, Steelers, Pirates, Penguins. I was a, I'm was a huge Pittsburgh fan, mm. um, whether it be the Steelers, the Pittsburgh Pirates, or the Pittsburgh Penguins. You know, we were the city of champions in the 1970s. We had two World Series, four Super Bowls. Mm. So it, it was a really prideful time, and I think that that's when Pittsburgh literally um, became a, a, a city in the United States that that was on the map mm -hmm. because of how successful their sports teams were. Makes sense. Okay, so you, you go on and wrestle in high school, obviously, win a state championship, which is, in Pennsylvania is a big deal, right? Like, it's one of those big wrestling states, Ohio, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. New Jersey. Winning state in those states is tough, yeah. you know? I mean, it's, no, no offense to like North Dakota or whatever, but you know, there's, <laughs> yeah. there's levels, right? Yeah, there's, 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 there's levels. Pennsylvania is the best state in the nation for wrestling. At least it produces more All-Americans than anybody else. And now Penn State's become a juggernaut of a program, you know? Yeah, yeah, they're doing incredibly well. They're, they've been winning the Nationals, dominating the Nationals for the past 10 years. Right. Yeah. Um, so how did you end up at, it's, am I pronouncing it right, Clarion University? Clarion, uh, yes. Um, I went there, uh, one, because I wasn't heavily recruited. Um, there were a lot of teams that were interested in me, but um, none of them locally, and I wanted to stay near home. Okay. Um, I wanted my family to attend all my wrestling events, so I decided to go to Clarion because I was only an hour and a half away from Pittsburgh, and I knew my family would go to all of my wrestling events. That's I was very tight with my family, and uh, you know they were pretty much my coaches growing up. Sure. And uh, so they attended all my wrestling events. So it was it was a 
it was, um, I guess, uh, convenient. Back to the Kraken. So, you know, obviously we didn't have iPods back then, but I'm sure you probably had a, a Walkman and, and eventually a Discman. Mm -hmm. uh, what were the songs you were listening to to pump you up for a wrestling match? Did you have a go-to? <laughs> I, I was into Ozzy Osbourne, uh, you know, Van Halen, mm. um, a lot of the rock bands. I was really into rock back then. Um, then I kind of eased into, um, uh, what would you call it, pop music in okay. college. And then after college, I, I you know what, I, I, I became uh, the president of the FCA chapter, Fellowship of Christian Athletes mm. in college. And I started listening to Christian music and I really enjoyed that. So that's what I listen to now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, Shannon Briggs uh, told us that he, he actually doesn't listen to you know anything that uh, would have any negative vibes to it because right. he was talking about like the subliminal messages they get in your head and they get yeah, you mad yeah. or you know I was like that's pretty introspective so he was like I usually listen to either yeah same thing Christian music or he just listens to like uh, classical or like EDM to where there's no lyrics to it where it's right, just like, so you don't get persuaded yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's interesting hearing that, that from is two, two different world champions now yeah. so you, you kick butt there three time All American mm -hmm. you know. At what point did you start realizing that you were, uh, you know, somebody that, well, I guess you had already won junior and, and senior mm -hmm. <laughs> championships before then. At, at what point did you start to angle yourself, pardon the pun, uh, towards the Olympics? Um, I knew I was a contender to make the Olympic team when I was in college. Um, my second year in college, I was wrestling Olympians and I was beating them. Ooh. And uh, so... I, I, I was a late bloomer wrestling. I, I didn't start getting good till high school. Mm. But when I started, uh, when the light bulb went off in my head, I was improving dramatically every year, but I was also wrestling year round. Mm. And I was, I was picking up on seasons. Uh, when you wrestle in the off season, you add, add another season to your repertoire. You know, you end up becoming that much better. Mm. And I, so I would wrestle year round. And by, by my second year in college, I was wrestling Olympians and beating them. And that, that's, when that, that's what gave me the confidence that I knew I could go to the next level after college. Okay. You know, I don't necessarily want to get into the details with the fox catcher stuff too much, but, you know, more so I want to know how you were able to handle all of that uh, in the preparation and then, you know, still manage to make your way through and then perform like you did. What, what do you think is special about you? What do you think got your uh. mindset right? Well, you know, losing Dave Schultz, he was the one that got shot and killed by John DuPont from Foxcatcher. I was a part of that club for, oh gosh, since 1988 and uh, when I was in college. And uh, if it weren't for that club, I don't think I would have won the gold medal because I would have never met Dave Schultz. I wouldn't have been trained by the best wrestlers and the best coaches in the world. Mm. And um, Foxcatcher was really a good thing. Mm. Uh, you know, unfortunately it caused Dave to lose his life and I felt for his family. But uh, you know, what John DuPont did for USA Wrestling was pretty incredible. Mm. Although, you know, what he did to Dave Schultz is unforgivable. Um, you know, what, he was able to get USA Wrestling on the map where we were, when we were the top team in the world. Mm. And uh, he was funding USA Wrestling and also funding his wrestlers of his club. So he was paying me to wrestle so I didn't have, a get, have to get a job after college. Mm. He was uh, making sure that everything was paid for and that I didn't have to worry about anything but wrestling. Got it. So you, you, you won the gold medal with a broken freaking neck. <laughs> it's true. It's um... <laughs> damn true. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so how did, how did you, A, how did you break your neck? And then B, when did you know that you did? I, I broke my neck in 1996, the first round of the Olympic trials. It was the U.S. Open, and I was having a stellar tournament. I was in the semifinals. So that was going against the Americans at the time. Yes, yes, it was going against the Americans. And I was wrestling a guy in the semis, and I got thrown on my head, and mm. I broke my neck, and I didn't know it. Did you feel it immediately? Yeah, the cracking and crunching in my neck. Mm. My arms went numb. My neck was in excruciating mm. pain. I didn't know what was wrong, so I kept wrestling. And I barely won the semis. And then my neck really stiffened up really badly. Mm. Uh, and, and I had to wrestle in the finals later on that night. And I didn't want to. Uh, I was gonna default. Oh. And, uh, but if I did that, I would have had to wrestle. The US Open champion gets to go to the finals of the Olympic trials. He gets a bye to the finals. Right. And all the other wrestlers that play, play second down through eighth have to wrestle in a mini tournament mm. again and wrestle th those guys, whoever wins wrestles the winner of the US Open in the final Olympic trials. 
So if I would have defaulted, I would have had to wrestle that in mini tournament Ooh, okay. instead of winning the the, the, the U.S. Open. And then I'll have one more match. Finals. Yeah. You so my, bro yeah, my brothers were like, you're going out there, you're doing it. I'm like, I don't want to do it. My neck's killing me. Mm. Uh, I think it's broken. And they're like, well, it doesn't matter. You're going to go out. So I went out there and I, all I did was push the guy around. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't attack him. Uh, but I won by a uh, double overtime referee's decision. It was the ugliest match ever, wow. but I, I was able to win and uh, I didn't win. I tied, but I, you know, the refs picked me. So I ended up in the finals of the Olympic trials and I went home the next day and uh, I went to my doctor and he took an MRI of my neck and he said, you have four broken vertebrae and two discs sticking directly in your spinal cord. He mm. said, you can't wrestle anymore. And uh, I was devastated. Mm. So I called USA Wrestling and told them, listen, can I push back my trials? Cause I'm gonna need a couple months to, uh, to heal from the injury. And they said, no, you're gonna have to show up in six weeks. So I went to another doctor to get a second opinion. And this doctor said basically the same thing, but he also said, when is the next round of the Olympic trials? I said, six weeks. He said, well, I might be able to get you ready by then. And I said, what's your plan? He said, well, you're not gonna be able to train much up until then, but uh, what, you, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a doctor travel with you to the uh, Olympic trials. He's gonna stick you with 12 shots of Novocaine all throughout your neck. Therefore, you won't feel the pain. You forget your neck is broken and you'll wrestle more freely. But he said, I'm warning you, an hour after your matches are over, you're going to be in excruciating pain uh, from the abuse your neck takes during those matches. Are you, are you okay with this? And I said, yes. Mm -hmm. So we did it. And uh, I, I had to wrestle best of three against the winner of the mini tournament. And I beat him twice. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing is, um, I, I probably wouldn't have beat him, but he heard that I broke my neck. <laughs> Hmm. So he was trying to attack my neck the whole time. Hmm. And every time he reached up to grab my neck, I would go down and attack his legs and score. Hmm. So it actually worked to my advantage. Interesting. And um, so I was fortunate. I won the Olympic trials uh -huh. and I went on to the Olympics. And my neck, I had a, you know, a few weeks or a month for it to heal, uh, but it wasn't entirely healed at the Olympics. So we did the same process in the Olympics. Okay. Yeah. Just shot it up. So tell me what that experience was like getting the gold medal, because obviously you had your eyeballs on it. It's such a difficult thing to do. Even some of the guys, you know, that have, have managed to pull it off, like Henry Suter or people like that. Mm -hmm. It's just they were unexpected. They were upsets. Like, what was that, you know, as an American getting um, a gold medal in Atlanta? What was that sensation like? Oh, uh, you know, that's all I dreamed about since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, ever since my brother started wrestling and got me into wrestling, it was my dream. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I. The thing is, I was so obsessed with the Olympics and wrestling, but it didn't matter what sport. When I saw when I saw the Olympics, I watched the whole thing. Mm. You know, I watched Bruce Jenner win the Olympic gold medal, and he was considered the best athlete in the world. Right. And all I wanted as a kid was an Olympic gold medal. Right. So you know, I dreamed about it, and I knew if I was going to do it, it would have to be in wrestling. Mm. Well, you know, a lot of folks you need know, to talk about like what's the hardest thing to do, like. Well, uh, to me, gold medal is tougher than the Super Bowl. There's a Super Bowl every year. There's only an Olympics every four years, and you only have so much of your athletic prime. Yeah. And it's not just the national thing, it's the world. You know, <laughs> you know that, that's why when I broke my neck, I was thinking maybe I'll just skip away and wait another four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I wasn't guaranteed I was going to make it four right. years later, so I knew I had to do it then. Okay, so 96, you do that. So uh, at that point, you know, you're a uh, household name in the Olympics, but obviously that doesn't, you know, pay that well. Mm -hmm. um, so you're looking around at your options. I'm sure you considered MMA at the time. You, yeah. You know, seen the UFC, you probably had contact with them, you know? Yeah, they, they approached me after 1996. And this is before Dana White owned them. Right. And uh, back then it was a little more barbaric mm -hmm. and uh, the money wasn't that great. Right. right? They, they wanted to sign a 10 fight deal with me for 150 grand. So I don't totally? make, only make 50, 15,000. Oh, not, not for one fight. <laughs> no, 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 no. Total. So, okay, that's a tough one. And, and that was their best contract back then, which was ridiculous. So I, I said no. And I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, the thing is, I never thought about what I was going to do after the Olympics. And now here I was, when I woke up after the Olympics the next day, I was like, what am I going to do now? And uh, uh, so I just, you know, I, the WWE approached me mm -hmm. after the UFC and um, 
Vince McMahon offered me a, a multi-million dollar deal. Mm. And uh, I turned it down because I, I grew up in a family that my brother said, listen, that pro wrestling stuff mm. is fake. You're the real deal. Mm. Don't watch it. Stay away from it. So I never watched it. So you didn't grow up as a mark? No, but I knew who Paul Hulk Hogan sure. was and Macho Man Randy Savage because yeah. they were mainstream. Cultural icons, right? Yeah, yeah. But I didn't watch it. So uh, when Vince offered me the deal, I flew to Connecticut and I met with him. Uh, I, I brought, brought it back to Pittsburgh and I brought it to my agent. And he, he threw it in the trash. Oh, wow. And I said, why'd you do that? And he said, well, he, he was a former wrestler, amateur wrestler, a former All-American, and he also was a pro football player. His okay. name was Ralph Sindrich. He's mm. a very successful NFL agent. He was my agent, too. Mm. And uh, he threw it in the trash, and he said, you're not going to do that. I'll find you something else. So he got me a, a sports casting job in Pittsburgh at okay. Fox. And... Uh, it was it was a horrible experience. Um, I, it was a startup station. Mm. Um, they didn't have anything ready, so I couldn't do any rehearsal. And the first night on the air, mm. I was terrified. And um, I remember uh, I was late to get uh, in there to do the sports casting, and I ran the studio, and I ran into the producer, and my scripts flew up in the air and went all out of order. <laughs> so he said, "Don't worry about the scripts. Just go to the the, the chair, the desk, and." Read the teleprompter, because you have a teleprompter, you can read it. Sure. And so I, I looked up and I was waiting for the teleprompter to turn on, it never turned on. Wow. So now I don't have my scripts and I the teleprompter's not working. It broke. So I had to guess what was gonna what was in the sports. I had to remember. And I remember the first segment was, yeah, Duquesne basketball. So I said, Duquesne basketball played a game today, let's go to the highlights. Right. And I went to the highlights and I didn't know the names of the players. So I was like number 72, just with a layup, there's two points. So then I had to guess which sport was next. <laughs> and I guessed football and it was baseball. <laughs> and the whole segment was like that. And, and then as, uh, as they start piling up, then you're like, what am I even doing? Oh, like, it, was, it was horrible. And, and you know what? My sports casting didn't get much better. I, I did it for a year and mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was a good experience. It was a learning experience, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't love it. So okay. um, I, I ended up, uh, start, I started watching WWE in 1998. And I fell in love with a character named Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mm -hmm. uh, he was really popular, and uh, the fans loved him. And he was actually a bad guy. You know, he was a beer drinker. He flipped his boss off. Didn't go by the rules. And but I loved him. And uh, I was watching Raw, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I really liked it. And I thought these guys are real athletic. So I called the WWE. And I asked if that contract still stood, that multi-million dollar deal, and mm -hmm. they said no, but oh. you can come up and try out. So I went up and tried out, and I, I picked up on it pretty quickly, and they, they offered right. me a contract. And uh, I trained for about seven months before I went on TV, and uh, that's not a lot of experience. Right. So I started on TV, uh, and from within the day I started on TV, ten months later I, I beat The Rock for the World Championship. And a half a year after that I beat Stone Cold Steve Austin for the World Championship. So I beat the two biggest names in the business my first year and a half in the business and I became a big star myself. So I was, I was very, uh, I, I caught on very quickly and I was very blessed to be, be in that era. Right. Talk me through, uh, you know, some of those feuds, you did stuff with The Rock, you obviously did stuff with Triple H, you did stuff uh, with, with uh, Stone Cold. What were your favorites? Who was the best to work with, you know? Um, you know, I, I, had a, I had my share of favorites. Um, I really love working with Stone Cold and The Rock. They they were exciting and they were just so good on the microphone and it, they were my biggest accomplishments. What? Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, those guys were were the biggest names, you know. Uh, uh -huh. uh, don't get me wrong. I, I also when I had the opportunity to wrestle Hulk Hogan, that was that was incredible. Cool, because uh, you know you watch, grew up watching Thunder Lips. Yeah, and, you know. yeah. He was so big, you know, such a huge star, mm -hmm. and uh, I got to wrestle him, and I, tap I out. literally, yeah, I made him tap out, which was crazy. <laughs> uh, but um, 
Brock Lesnar was a great one. We had a lot of chemistry. Chris Benoit was oh, yes. a, another great one. Uh, Eddie Guerrero, Shawn Michaels. Right. Those those guys were the best. And Ray, um, you know, Ray Mysterio was another great one. I really enjoyed being with them. They were all different, but they were all they were all considered you know one of the top guys in the business. Right. Well, because you were so good and, and could carry so many different styles, mm -hmm. you were able to have just you know fantastic matches with yeah. all of those people. I had great chemistry with all of them. So you know you you kick butt there. You win a bunch of titles. Uh, and then you, you jump over and you know, you're, you're the biggest star that TNA kind of ever had and you know, if somebody's looking for the face of that franchise, you're that guy, right? Yeah, so, yeah, I had so, a lot of fun at TNA. Yeah, so tell me about that process, like what, what cultural changes there were and, and um, you know. TNA was a smaller company, you know, they, they were growing. Uh, at the time they were, you know, they were on Spike TV and they were doing about one million viewers a week. It wasn't real impressive, but it, it was a decent rating. And I got there, and we, we worked up to, to about 2.1 million viewers a week, and that, that was a big, big deal back then. And uh, I got to wrestle guys I'd never, never had a chance to wrestle. Uh, you know, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, mm -hmm. Sting, um, you know. Uh, okay. I'm going to do this. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to hook you up. Yeah, but there, there were a lot of guys that I was fortunate enough to work with that were extremely talented. Bobby Roode, James Storm, Eric Young, uh, Alex Shelley, Chris Saban. Guys that um, weren't really mainstream at the time. Mm. And uh, I had a great, a great opportunity to work with those guys and had a lot of fun doing it. And I, I was actually in TNA longer than I was in WWE. Right. And uh, I love being in TNA. It was, it, you just have more creative control of okay. what you wanted to do. That makes and sense. It was, it was a little different, you know. In WWE, everything's scripted, and you, you know, go by the script, and you know, you, you do what you're supposed to Very do. Very corporate. And, yeah, yeah, and and that's fine too. Sure. That's obviously how I the learned. blueprint. It's it's worked for. Yeah, it's forty years. Extremely well. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's kind of circle back as far as like wrestlers. Uh, we'll do a Mount Rushmore of wrestlers. Mm -hmm. And, and I think Chris asked you this too, right? Yes. We'll, yes. we'll extend it to six faces. Ah. This particular one. Stretch um, it out a little further for you. Shout out Chris Van Vliet. Uh, let me see. That's six. Um, I'm going to go Stone Cold, Rock, uh, Shawn Michaels, uh, Undertaker, uh, John Cena, and uh, Eddie Guerrero. Okay. How about amateur wrestling? Amateur wrestling, the Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Ooh, uh, Jordan Burroughs, John Smith. Nice, um, solid. Uh, uh, and I like this for me. Okay. Look at that one. Dave Schultz, definitely yeah. up there. Um, Kenny Monday, Bruce Baumgartner, and uh, uh, we'll go with uh, Jake Varner. He's been picking up a lot of wins right now, a lot of world championships and Olympic gold medals. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you, you keep up with MMA then too, right? Yeah, somewhat. Yeah. I, I haven't lately, but uh, yeah, the, the Mount Rushmore of MMA, gosh. Uh, I really loved uh, uh, back in the early 2000s when uh, Randy Couture and Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell were going at right. it. John Jones is doing an incredible job. Uh, Conor McGregor. Um, uh, Henry Cejudo, I really enjoyed watching yeah, yeah. him. I would, I would put those six in the Mount Rushmore. So kind of drop that shoulder down a little bit. This is kind of like vibration therapy, kind of moves up the muscles around there. Couldn't raise that arm up. That's how that feels. Block to the top. Yeah. And just pull that elbow back towards me now. Yeah, I can feel it crunching around in there. Yeah, Doc's gonna have some work to do on that one for sure. All right, Kurt, who's in your top six movies of all time? Uh, well, let's see, Vision Quest, Rocky, Rudy. Um, yeah. I, I'm That's also a big Star Wars fan. Nice. And a uh, Harry Potter fan. Okay. <laughs> Mix up a little bit there. And uh, I, uh, big uh, vacation fan. Okay. Chevy oh, Chase. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same. Good taste, man. Good taste. <laughs> Man's got great taste. Yeah. All right, bring this leg up. Another question we've had. Are you, are you actually lactose intolerant? 
No. No, you, you actually do drink milk. milk. Okay. Yes, I do. Because <laughs> a lot of people wonder if that was kayfabe. No, no. You know what? I actually, on my podcast, I, I said I hate milk. And I was joking. And uh -huh. all, all, my, all my fans were like, you hate milk? I said, no. I was no. messing around. <laughs> yeah. Regular yeah. chocolate, strawberry? You switch it up ever? Uh, I like Rain. chocolate. Okay. I like chocolate. Well, chocolate milk, yeah, actually. I usually drink a uh, skim or 2%. Okay. Get your breath out. <sighs> yeah, well, yeah, that moved pretty good. Any hobbies or quirks that you think that people wouldn't expect from you? Well, uh, I'm starting back up soon. I was a drummer for 20 years wow. and uh, I quit for a while, but I'm gonna buy a drum set this year and get back into it since mm. I retired. Uh, and podcast, podcast is on YouTube? Yes, yes. So if you guys didn't, unsubscribe from my channel right now. Go ahead and leave and unsubscribe. Go over, check out his podcast. <laughs> Go subscribe to him, put the notification bell on his and make sure you unsubscribe from mine. Wow. He's got good stuff going on over there. Oh, thank you. What other business stuff you got going? Um, I own a supplement company called uh, Physically Fit Nutrition. We have a product called Chicken Snacks. They're high protein, low carbohydrate. You can order those online? Yeah, yeah, they're really good. What's they, the website for them? Um, physicallyfit.com. Okay. Yeah, and- uh, They deliver? We have, yep. And they, we have a bunch of different flavors. They're all really good. Okay. And then uh, the Peacock documentary. Talk a little bit about that. The documentary angle, it's on Peacock now. It's about my life story. Um, it covers me growing up all throughout the Olympics, my high school, college training, Olympic training. And then it uh, parlays into my WWE career and uh, my TNA career and all the way up until now. And. Uh, it's a really good documentary, very emotional. Uh, the director did an incredible job, Alex Perry. Um, I'm really happy with it, so I'm real proud of it. And then the final question we got here, acute or obtuse? <laughs> Angle? Um, acute. I knew he would do us the Kurt, you see? <laughs> yeah. You're clever. Man. Uh, got him. <laughs> So thanks again, Kurt, for uh, joining us today. How, how's your, how the muscles feeling there? Feeling I'm looser? feeling good, feeling yeah. loose, I'm ready to go. I think I might even go back to the WB and do a couple matches. Oh man, <laughs> he's got one more WrestleMania match. Hey, Vince came back and did it, right? So Yes, he did, yes, he's crazy. He's crazy, he but he yeah, did it. Yeah. I think 20 years older than you, so yeah. there might be one more in the tank there. So make sure you guys go check out his podcast, check out the website we talked about earlier. I'll link some of that stuff below. Uh, show him some love. Make sure you go check out the, the documentary. I think he has a book on Amazon too, if you haven't picked that up yet. That's pretty it's awesome. True, it's true, yes. It's, 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 That's the name of the book. <laughs> oh, I knew that, but I thought you were gonna hit me with your, with your tagline <laughs> on me. I was, trying, I was trying to lob it up for you to alley me. It's damn true. Um, yeah, otherwise, go show him some love. Follow him on Instagram. Uh, he got his TikTok going now, so we're going to send him some clips. He's going to stick up over there as well. Awesome, man. We appreciate the time. Thank you. All right, Kurt, how are you feeling there? Feel stretched out, loosen up? Yeah, yeah, I feel great. How about I show you one of my stretches? Okay, is this like an Olympic stretch or like a W? Yeah, Olympic. WLB, yeah, I learned it more from there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I always kind of wanted to know like their tips of longevity because they're on the road and taking bumps and. Uh, yeah. So yeah, anything I can learn from, I'll probably put it in my practice. Yeah, that's so, what I'll teach you. Right so what do I do? Yeah, you have to lay down on your stomach. Okay, I'm gonna lay down here. All right, and then All right. Gonna, uh, give me this foot. Is this like a yoga move? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna pick it up. Oh, 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 oh man! Oh, 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 man! That, that's my stretch. <laughs> and he did it with a broken freaking neck. <laughs>